Shut up and sit down. Hi guys and welcome to this video where I'll be running through my deep sky astrophotography rig that you can see behind me. Um, I'll be showing you the equipment that's on there, the scope, the cameras and all the other little gubbins that go with it. Um, give you an idea of what I'm using to shoot the really small targets that are about in the sky at this time of year. Uh, it's known as galaxy season. Uh, all the targets are, are tiny, very small and very dim. So this is a rig that I've only just set up. Um, the camera that I'm using is one that I've never used for, for actually deep sky astrophotography. It's something that I've used for lunar and planetary imaging before, but I gave it a go the other night and I was super impressed with it. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you, uh, give you guys some ideas. Um, be great to hear about what you guys shoot with at this time of the year, especially if you've got refractors like I've got. It's only an 80 mil. Um, with a focal length of 480 so it's a wide field um, telescope and in this case I've had to use a, a camera with a very small sensor to be able to bring that field of view right down to something that's more suitable for this time of year so if we uh, go over to the rig I'll run you around it so I'll start off at the base of the rig you can see my power box that I've created myself and this has got all the power and data in it um, so everything from up here gets rooted down into this box and then we literally just have one power cable out which plugs in to this extension lead and one USB out which then runs to my laptop that kind of keeps things a lot neater than uh, you can see all the, the cables here. If all that was on the floor running to my laptop, I'd end up tripping over it, unplugging things. So that just keeps it nice and tidy, a lot easier to manage and a lot easier to, uh, to take in and out as well. So there's no cables dangling all over the floor and getting tangled up. Moving up, got just a SynScan hand controller. And all this is on the EQ5 tripod with the Skywatcher extension pier. Now what that gives you, not only is it a quite handy place to have all your attachments fixed to, so I've got my dew heater, controls there from Rather Valley Optics, the actual mount control box, and my power for my a uh, Canon camera, which I'm not using at the moment, but it's there if I need it. But it also helps stop the telescope from running into any of the legs, which it used to do quite a lot. And it also, you can see that I have my roof that overhangs quite a lot, so getting that extra height just helps to, to, uh, to get a bit of extra sky to, to shoot. So moving further up, we've got the EQ5 head, which is a pretty simple uh, mount. It's had the go-to upgrade added, so it's um, it's got the, the tracking functions. It can track, it can go to objects, it can be run by the computer, which is essential if you want to do deep sky astrophotography. Okay, so now we're moving on to the telescope which as you can see in this case is the Orion ED80T-CF and that name pretty much describes exactly what this telescope is the ED is extra low dispersion glass which is used for better colour correction and preventing fringing around bright objects the 80 refers to the aperture which is 80 millimeters. T is the number of elements of glass which is 3, so it's triplet and the CF refers to the carbon fibre. The glass used for this telescope is FPL 53 which I think is one of the most um, one of the best quality glasses you can get. 
um, and it's used to prevent uh, again fringing around bright objects you can see this image here is taken with the Orion short tube 80 which is just a single element um, and obviously not high quality glass like the other one um, but you can see how you get the blue fringing around the bright stars and essentially the better quality glass you get and the more elements of glass the less you'll see those effects moving on to the side here we have the OVL field flattener and what the field flattener does is it creates a flat field across the whole frame of the uh, of the imaging sensor which even though it's a triplet it, that still doesn't correct for the uh, for the curvature of the lens so you'll get elongated stars in the corners of your image and this field flattener just helps to flatten all that out to give you round stars all the way to the edges of your image so it's pretty essential I then have a filter wheel which isn't being used obviously this is a, a color camera that I've got attached to it at the moment but it just helps me get the right back focus from the um, field flattener which is essential if you don't get that right you just create another kind of distortion in the uh, in the corners of your image so that's that gives me 55 millimeters from the sensor to the back of the field flattener and then we've got my camera that I've just started to use this one this one is the Altair Astro GP Cam 3 it's the 178C which is the one shot color camera as you can see there now this one's got a very small sensor I'll check what size that is and put that in the video somehow if I can figure that out um, but having that smaller sensor and still having a 6 megapixel uh, resolution it, it it helps to get closer to those uh, to those deep sky targets and with my DSLR it has a much bigger sensor it's over four times the size um, and that just creates just a, a, the field of view is much too wide and the, the targets then are much too small <coughs> so having that small sensor is pretty essential for this time of the year because there's no no kind of large targets the, the best you can do is probably to get Bode's galaxy and the cigar galaxy in one shot but other than that everything's just too small you just don't get the kind of the impact from that image that you're really looking for. So moving on, I've got the uh, the Skywatcher 50mm guide scope, and on that I've got the Altair Astro uh, GP Cam 2, and I think this is the 190. I can't remember. It must say on it somewhere. No, I think it's the 190, but I'll correct that. That's a mono camera. Um, and the reason why I've got, I haven't got any filter wheel on this is you don't need it for, for guiding. It's, uh, it is purely just to, to focus in on one star and to track that star. So it just needs to be sensitive, which a mono camera is a lot more sensitive than a color camera. So for this purpose, that's exactly what I need. Oh, what else have we got? Astra Zap dew heaters on both the, the guide scope and the main scope and having that just prevents the optics from fogging up during the session which obviously would mean the end of your session if that happens if the guide scope fogs up it can't follow the star and then your tracking just goes to pop and you've got nothing you can use so it's, uh, it's actually pretty good here where I am I'm up on the fifth floor, so I don't really, I haven't, well, I haven't suffered from any kind of condensation on the mount or the scope or anything like that as of yet, so that's either it's doing its job well, or I'm just I'm not somewhere where I'm going to really suffer with dew that badly. So that's the, uh, the crux of the setup. Now one thing you might notice as I'm moving around here is that the deck that it's on is pretty unstable. 
there's just a small amount of movement just sends everything shaking and wobbling the, the deck is pretty much rotten so it moves around quite a lot which is why I am, I'm using this refractor now I used my uh, Skywatcher 200p the other night and even the smallest movement the smallest judder on this uh, on the deck and it just set it off wobbling and it just it, it took quite a while to calm down so at least with a scope like this it's fairly light it's fairly it's short so it doesn't create a lot of uh, a lot of motion if it does wobble a little bit and settles down pretty quick um, which is why I decided to go for the small chip camera as well because uh, that kind of gets the the field of view narrowed down that way rather than going for using a lot of focal length um, it might be better to use something like uh, Max Tough uh, Cassegrain scope, something with a lot of focal length there, but it's still quite short and quite uh, quite compact. Um, another thing as well, being up at, on this uh, this kind of height, is that the wind up here is a lot more than it is if we were down in say a garden or just anywhere with a bit bit more shelter. So it's it's kind of out. Uh, projecting out over the edge of the balcony out of the edge of the building line there so any kind of little gust of wind it just it just causes a little judder and with that um, Newtonian telescope it just really it really is an issue you can't probably can't go more than 30 seconds before uh, a little bit of wind comes and just completely ruins that shot so if you're trying to do something 180 or you know a minute even two three minutes it's just impossible with that kind of size scope up here so i'm going to stick with my refractor for now um and just keep using this little camera which again um, i'm going to do another video later using that one um and hopefully you guys will see as well just how good that is how sensitive it is and how uh, sharp the images are. I was shocked when I saw the previews come through on uh, Astrophotography Tool compared to my DSLR it was just night and day there was no noise um, you could see the target really clearly uh, most of the time with the DSLR when I'm doing that you're looking at a smudge on the on the on the uh, on the screen and it's not until you process it that you really find out whether it's any good or not whereas this you can really see that the data you've got is uh, is very good and uh, the image quality is really crisp even though it's a six megapixel camera it's a very small um, pixel size I will find out what pixel size and add that to the video so hopefully that will flash up if my video skills are good enough um, but yeah it's it's kind of it's less than a quarter the size of the sensor of the uh, of the DSLR but it's six megapixel compared to the 18 megapixel so it's the equivalent of having um, say a 30 megapixel DSLR attached to it so if you wanted to make a, a mosaic you could do something like that get a really high res image that way uh, and again using it for the moon that the focal um, the focal length on something like that if you use the point five reducer I think it is it uh, it gets the, the moon in the in the frame of view uh, real nice or is it, I can't remember whether it's with that or without it but either way it's uh, it's kind of an all-round uh, rig at the moment where in the summer I'm sure I'll be replacing the that small sensor with something larger because it will just be useless when it comes to shooting the, the large nebulas so I'll be going back to the DSLR then but for now I'm going to enjoy uh, getting some more time using the CMOS sensor I suppose it's what everyone goes to I was always very much thinking that I'd stay with with the DSLRs and just stick with that rather than moving to CMOS cameras um, but now having used this I really feel that as soon as I can as soon as I can afford it really I will be moving on to uh, a CMOS sensor rather than carrying on with any DSLR. It's still good to have those for um, the little portable rig which I'll do a video on soon. Um, just something that doesn't need a laptop. If you're going out and about with it then obviously you don't want to be taking your laptop along with you everywhere. 
Um, but here from home where you've got everything you need, I think the CMOS is definitely the way to go. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting to show you guys what I'm using. Um, hopefully give you some ideas of what you might be able to use. I know that a lot of people struggle uh, this time of year with these small targets. Until I got that camera, I was just really at a loss of, of what to do really. I, I'd just point at any old piece of the sky and just just image and just hope to, to get something interesting which pretty much never happened. Um, or gave a, one of the galaxies a, a go but with the DSLR you just ended up with a smudge. So this has really kind of opened up some more opportunities um, and I'm really looking forward to, to getting into those messier objects which I've just made my own catalogue for and started to fill that in. Um, so I'm definitely going to try and get some more of those in. Uh, the smaller targets uh, that are about, the globular clusters, this frames those up really, really well. Um, you might have seen my M3 video, uh, my M3 image on Instagram. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to be making a, another video soon. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on those and uh, clear skies. Mm -hmm.